For accurate weather forecast and live news, subscribe to our Scamet Weather YouTube channel. Press the bell icon and do not miss on any of our weather news. Welcome to SkyMet. Uh, we have a special session and a video, uh, La Nina and its uh, impact of the monsoon, 2021. Actually, I had done earlier a video in uh, Hindi and uh, when we saw the comments, so there were some suggestions that we uh, could do this in English also for the benefit of the viewers and hence this video. In this, we will discuss about uh, La Nina conditions, mainly under three heads. That is, where, what is La Nina? Where does it occur? What is the current status of uh, La Nina? And what is its projection as far as the monsoon is concerned? Firstly, we have a look at the, the uh, uh, La Nina conditions. The El Nino and La Nina. People are very, very familiar with these conditions and its connection with the uh, monsoon as such. Uh, you see, La Nina and El Nino both, they have a very strong connection almost in all the seasons over Indian subcontinent. But then more concerned at the monsoon, that is both El Nino as well as La Nina. El Nino is more strongly connected with the monsoon performance than La Nina. Now, coming to La Nina per se, which at the moment is prevailing, it's the Pacific Ocean, okay, where, where, where this, uh, this occurs. This is the Pacific Ocean. Pacific is one of the largest and the deepest ocean as such. It's almost about 100 million square kilometer area which it covers. And this uh, Nino indices which we are talking about, that uh, they are also covered almost over an area of about 1 lakh plus square kilometer. And this is done over and near the equator. This I said is uh, Pacific area and this is uh, South America and then this is Peru. And then Nino indices, there are four Nino indices, we call them as ONI, Oceanic Nino indices, Nino 1 plus 2, Nino 3 and Nino 4. And Nino 3.4. Nino 3.4 is the principal measure for monitoring, processing and predicting a monsoon. Nino 1 plus 2 is uh, south of the equator only. 0 to 10 degrees south. Then comes Nino 3 region which is plus minus 5 degree on either side of the equator. This is Nino 3 and then it is followed by Nino 4. The one third portion of Nino 4 and two third portion of Nino 3, this comprises Nino 3.4. This is the portion. That means the central parts of the Pacific, they form the Nino point, uh, Nino 3.4 uh, region, which is uh, the principal measure for predicting monsoon. So this is about uh, this uh, uh, Nino indices, four indices are there. And then we have the table for the uh, Nino indices. The uh, four indices are measured every week, the latest values uh, they are there. And then uh, obviously they are uh, even averaged out over a period of month also and then over a period of three months also, which give us the quarterly values but as of now I have given uh, these uh, uh, six values every week starting with the 25th of Jan and coming up to 1st of March this is the latest value the this is closer to the coast of South America this portion that is Nino 1 plus 2 and Nino 3 that means this is the this is the eastern parts and we see the eastern parts is a little warmer than the western and the central parts Nino 3.4 there is a lot of fluctuations going on. We see it's 25th of Jan. It's a variation of it's a minus 1.1 degree centigrade is the Nino index, and then it dropped to 0 0.7, 0 0.7. Again, rose through minus 1.2 value rose through. That means it's a cooling. It again dropped to 0 0.7, and now it is minus 1.2. So means sufficient cooling is still there in the Pacific and more so in the central and the western. Pacific. And mind you, the sea conditions, they remain steady for longer. They do not lose as well as gain heat quickly. Okay, water retains its memory and so will happen in this case also. Fluctuations in this means uh, thermocline is uh, undergoing a change. 
That means uh, the sea surface temperature from surface till about say 150, 200 meters depth, they are undergoing a, a change now. And these fluctuations also mean that the La Nina is taking a baby steps now towards neutral conditions. Next, we have a look at the projection of La Nina for this year. Uh, La Nina or El Nino in the Pacific, uh, they have uh, three components are there. One is La Nina, the other one is a neutral and the third one is El Nino. So 100% of this is divided between these three. When we see Jan, Feb, March, this is on a quarterly basis, uh, these uh, values are uh, uh, calculated. In the beginning of the year itself, we saw it is a total, total 100% of La Nina conditions. There is uh, no contribution at all of neutral as well as El Nino. Blue color is La Nina, gray is uh, neutral and uh, red one is the El Nino. But we see the La Nina values are slightly dropping now uh, from February, March onward and then neutral is a little coming up. So that means neutral is rising at the behest of drop in La Nina conditions. Once we comes to uh, March, April, May, further, further La Nina uh, percentage drops and neutral builds up. This keeps on happening till almost we reach the arrival of the monsoon sometime in the month of June, wherein El Nino is making its very, very marginal presence. And in any case, El Nino's presence uh, throughout the monsoon season, it remains not uh, more than 10%, which is uh, negligible, I will say. But then, the striking feature of this particular graph is the La Nina is uh, decreasing and once the monsoon commences sometime in the month of uh, end May or June, the conditions are rising again. Look at this, this is the lowest value of La Nina and it is rising again as we go through the monsoon season. This is July, August, September and uh, normally it doesn't happen that um, La Nina was there, it is uh, devolving and after devolving again. Uh, uh, it is it is uh, rising now. Uh, it uh, doesn't happen frequently. It happened in 2010 and 11 also, but incidentally both the years they had a normal monsoon at that time. So we have to confirm it with the next projection which we have in the month of March. Normally around middle of the month we get the fresh projections and once that come we share with you. And uh, But then this one particular graph it shows that uh, LD, at least El Nino is not going to corrupt the monsoon rain as such. On the contrary, the neutral conditions and the La Nina percentage, it suggests that possibly as far as the oceanic parameter La Nina is concerned, it could give a good monsoon. Uh, SkyMet has already given its uh, prediction, first prediction of being a normal monsoon, positive side of the normal. And we confirm it uh, in, in our detailed forecast, which will come up a little later. Now, this is not the only oceanic parameter which contributes towards the monsoon. There is another one which is closer home, IOD, Indian Ocean Dipole. We will have its uh, readings also and share with you in one of the videos. In addition to that, there are many other players also. MGO is there which comes uh, during the monsoon period. And in addition to these oceanic parameters, there are other contributors, be it snow, be it the glaciers, amount of snow, the temperature pressure, pressure profile over our continent, over the neighboring continents. It's a, it's a huge set of data which is to be computed for calculation of the monsoon performance. But then since this one has a very strong connection, La Nina as well as El Nino, El Nino more than the La Nina, we thought of sharing with you. We will share the further information uh, 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 when it's ready on Indian Ocean Dipole with you and vis a -vis its impact on the coming up monsoon 2021. Thank you for connecting with us. Uh, Keep staying with us for latest and further information. Thank you. Keep your family healthy by downloading SkyMet AQI app and tracking air pollution of your location in real time.